Hello, I want to pick up some comments and I, I, I often get into trouble for dwelling on only one comment and forgetting all the others. So uh, I think um, I should start with Tony Dick, who says, OK, so hotels are wrong, disused military camps are wrong and floating accommodation is wrong. What is right? Should we have built a couple of new Liverpools last year to cope? Why did we not do that? You cannot propose a satisfactory solution then I think you should be claiming that it is actually possible and that others are just too stupid to make it happen. Well, I don't think that uh, putting people in hotels is the way forward. I think the way forward is to process their applications as fast as possible, which means speeding up the home office um, activity. And that brings me to the Republic of Sardinica, who has always got uh, some entertaining points to make. Uh, uh, I, I don't know whether this is a he or a she, but um, uh, the Republic says, extraordinary, again and again, and it seems indolent is your new word. What's extraordinary is that you believe it's right to prioritise these people over others. What about the millions of children in this country that are hungry and living in poverty, the homeless, the deprived, and those who have to visit food banks time and time again? Well, I've pointed out in the past that my heart goes out to these people and the fact that I'm not talking about them at the moment doesn't mean they're not at the front of my brain uh, and that they shouldn't be at the front of everybody's. And yet again, you say the Home Office is at fault. Yes. You call them lazy and indolent. Yes. Is that everyone at the Home Office? Is it those thousands of people who work there, all of them, just because you can't get a passport in time to, you criticise thousands of people? Well, actually... In time for what? I'm not planning to travel anywhere. My issue with the passport is simply the process, and it's been out. It's outsourced anyway. It's not directly the Home Office. It's um, <laughs> it's the Home Office laziness in not processing passports. It gives it to somebody else. They pretend they're part of government, and you go round and round, uh, telephoning them and trying to get what you want. You can't get it. Uh, Britain does not have a responsibility for people who came here illegally. We do not have to accept people who break the law simply because they want to be here and not one of the safe countries, 57 safe countries now defined, uh, uh, they pass through to get to the beaches in northern France. Not all asylum seekers are fleeing any form of persecution, only 40% are economic migrants. Well, that's why the Home Office needs to determine who are genuine asylum seekers and who are not and we shouldn't be punishing everybody simply because we can't identify and we haven't got the uh, time or the resources to identify uh, who is genuine and who is not because the home office is on a sort of lazy call the indolence of the home office there may be some good people working there i, I know a few by the way uh, but they have little effect on the system as a whole, um, and it's short-staffed, it's, short it's complex. Byzantine is a word which is often used. The culture at the top, and particularly the ministers at the top, the, the process of ministers from Theresa May onwards, stinks. It stinks from the head. What's the, the, the Greek expression for that? Apotokafali vromai topsari. The fish stinks from the head. I, I, I think it's actually a, 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 a um, Turkish expression which was then adopted by Greece. It's, there's also a, a Russian version of it, but we don't need to go. I, I made a video about this long ago. The culture at the top is grotesque. It stinks from the head. And the churn is high. The duplicated authority, the vague areas of policy division, so lacking direction, so lacking precision, so lacking focus. And the controversial policies that are not fully taken up by the civil service, which is often rebellious and eager to move elsewhere. Better to wait it out, they might say, than uh, be better to wait for a change of leadership, which is certain to come soon. As for the legality, and you you make the point about legality, and a lot of people make these points about these migrants are illegal. Well, that's only according to very recent British law, which was pushed through um, 
by Suella Bradman, who could not say in the preamble to the law that it was compatible with the European Convention on Human Rights that we are still signatories to. So, under, you know, un under any formulation, that smells like a bad law, doesn't it? And simply making a law that states that anyone comes here, anyone who comes here by an illegal route, which I concede, is automatically illegal, which I don't concede, as the two um, laws that she put through, the illegal migration law and the nationality and borders law, claim uh, to, be, to, 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 to be stating who is and who is not illegal in defiance of international convention. Um, and, and at the same time, you've got this legacy, I think it's called, and the flow backlog, these various uh, strata of backlog cases that go well over 130,000 people housed predominantly in hotels at a cost of not 6,000, not 7,000, but 8 and sometimes 8.5 thousand are the figures that I've heard. It's extraordinary that you can be taken in, so taken in by the propaganda that says that there are people who can be defined as illegal simply because they've come here by an illegal route. That is not the international definition. And I'm sure it will be challenged in the courts. And to say that red is green does not mean it actually is. And the Rwanda scheme is exactly in the same uh, bucket. It's the same, it's the same nonsense of lawyers, uh, of um, politicians desperate to redefine reality. The only way to redefine reality is to redefine the international conventions of which we remain a signatory. The 1951 Refugee Convention, if we, if we had an international conference to redefine that, we would solve most of the problems like that. But I don't think that's the aim of the present government. And I find that reprehensible and deeply sad. Uh, so somebody else pointed out that the country is going to the dogs. I find that a very entertaining expression. And I've often wondered what the where, where the idiom comes from. Is it, um, uh, is it an etymology which suggests you're thrown out on your ear, thrown out of the city uh, because you are a criminal and that you have to compete with the dogs for your food? Or is it that uh, this is a reference to the food that is thrown out for the dogs? Or indeed, is it... Um, is it something that suggests that you are depending on funds raised by betting on dog races? I have no idea. Anyway, Suzanne. Suzanne says there are very few politicians or other people in authority who are good role models. I agree. Many younger people, potentially the next in line, are either disengaged or excluded by the elitism that dominates our educational and political system. Mary Black expressed this very well in a series of documentaries about imposter syndrome. It's often the case that anyone with an ounce of integrity, principles and vision will have a hard time unless they surrender that. Well, you may be right. You may well be right. It's a sorry reflection on how things are. And Peter Stobbs uh, goes back to Walter Badgett, the great 19th century commentator on, and even sharper of, the British Constitution, the editor of The Economist, wrote that to men of affairs like himself, Britain was already a secret republic which had insinuated itself within the folds of monarchy. The monarchy, he wrote, acts as a disguise, enabling our real rulers to change without heedless people knowing it. The masses of Englishmen are not fit for an elective government. If they knew how near they were to it, they would be surprised and almost tremble. Reprinted in The Economist, the 22nd of the 10th, 1994. It's always entertaining to look at things from a much broader constitutional perspective. So I'm really very grateful to you for all the various comments that you have provided, that you continue to provide. As I say, whether I like them or not, I read as many as I can, and every so often I get an opportunity to repeat them um, and to comment on them publicly.